And welcome back to Captain Review. This is episode number nine, so I'm going to review the next five builds that were posted to my Discord. So if you want your build reviewed, you can just post the Discord, and I do them in the order that they're posted. So let's go ahead, and we'll start by looking at the Steam page, as we usually do. So the first one here is going to be from Benzin. It's the Kungshal All-Terrain Vehicle number 87. So let's quickly just look through some pictures. Some, so some good detail in here, as usual from Benzin. Looks really cool. Kung's All All Terrain Vehicle number 87 by Benson. Cool GIF. Designed in the Kung Sol Sock, the All Terrain Vehicle of the Origination are engineering to overcome the most hostile and rugged landscapes while keeping it personal, keeping its personnel safe. Uh, top speed 180 kilometers an hour, fuel capacity 11,000 units, range 650 kilometers, featuring excellent off-road capability. 6x6 drivetrain, weather analyzer, GPS tracking, night vision, bed, lav, infirmary with medical bed, small onboard workshop, engine control panel. Um, it's nice to see these; makes it a little bit easier to, um, you know, make the way through the through the panel. So. Um, very cool, they're all numbered. This is how you do real diagrams for things like aircraft. I have posters of some of the aircraft I've flown, and this is how they do it. Uh, radio signal strength, PTT, sending signal, receiving signal, decrease freak, increase freak, frequency, fuel pump, supercharger, gauge, backup, gens, battery, fuel pressure, torque, exhaust pressure, fuel, engine temp, first, second, and third radiator temp, critical temp, first, second, and third radiator pumps. Uh, vehicle is a replica from the graphic novel The Labyrinth, made by Simon Stalag. Simon Stalag's The Labyrinth Lore. They appear out of nowhere, the black globes, the anomalies, poisoning our atmosphere, making it unbreathable. The progress was slow at first, but now it feels like just a blink of an eye. As humanity fell into desperation, we understood we had to build an ark, the Kongshal Organization. Blood spilled to keep the desperate away as we built our future home. But what we, what could we do? We only had space for the chosen. It's either a hundred or a hundred thousand. I think it's a hundred thousand. Um, different countries use either commas or dots. Now we live underground in the safe Kungshal. Experiments from surface excursions via all-terrain vehicles shows that a kind of life is beginning on Earth. The time of mankind might be over. So that's that's really cool. I might have to look into that. Credits the mighty Das Froge. Artificial Horizon, one by one configurable digital speedo, configurable engine monitor, weather screen, one by one uh, ultra simple digital compass, all monitor map, lazy cats modular engine, uh, easy oats. Good crediting there, and uh, if you want to see any of the components, you can check them out there. I, <laughs> I knew I said the Hankel uh, HE219 was going to be my last creation, but I couldn't help myself to make this and publish before I leave. Simon Stalag's artwork and narrative made me feel things in a in a very wide angle, sweet memories from my childhood and what it meant to grow up, thanks to Tales from the Loop and Things from the Flood. So, I've been interested in Tales from the Loop. I haven't gotten into that. Um, that would be good to watch. Fear and uneasiness with some kind of nostalgia, thanks to Electric State and the Labyrinth. This is a small tribute to Simon Stalag's work. Simon Stalag and his work. I will not be active anymore, but feel free to join Benzin's Discord. So head over there. Um, all right, so here's the Kongstal. Again, my pronunciations could be wrong, so uh, if anyone knows better, let me know. I always like Benzin's paint jobs. Um, I wish I could get in, t get this meticulous. It tends to be, um, you know, I tend not to get into it so much, but the, the gradients are really good on this. Looks really good. Really cool design. Looks like a big, imposing vehicle. Very cool. Good XML work, probably, on some of the stuff here. Very cool. Drive lines look nice and realistic. These are interesting that they're hinged in the back here. I don't know if that's just for decoration. Very cool. Love the paint scheme. The paint's done really well with the gradient. And it will be interesting to see how to get in here. So we have some equipment hoses underneath, some uh, repair equipment. Very cool. What's this? Ah! <laughs> I crushed my head. That's our entrance. Very cool. The detail into this is really amazing. Um, Benzin always does an excellent job. Raise the ramp. Very cool in here. So, you know, no no areas spared detail, you know. Um, good XML work in here to get these uh, angles. These are rocket 
motors, I believe. Um, just really excellent detailing all around, you know, to make it look really fantastic in here. Lots of gear, lights, interior lights, outside temp, outside radiation level, lots of gear in here. Just really, you know, phenomenal um, work on the detailing as usual. Batteries. Uh, here's the med room. So uh, one thing Benson does a really great job at is always has a really good um, efficient use of space. And uh, so that's really excellent as well. Sorry, I have a cold, so it's brutal for me to speak. Uh, really nice kitchenette. Oh, this is really cool. This I love the tightness of some of these spaces that uh, Benson gets into. Like, uh, you have... I think this is actually the workshop, but not a kitchen, but, um, you know, like the nice painted tools, really good detail, nice use of all the parts here, trying to get those in and, and, uh, you know, very cool. You know, this looks how it, you know, looks like you're in a nice, um, you know, actual useful room. And, you know, if you think of like an RV or you think of like, um, a boat, you know, a, um, a boat you may live on. They always have very efficient use of space. This is super cool space in here. Um, use of the windows in here and the bed. Uh, really a nice, like, cozy and livable space. You know, I would like to, you know, I definitely can learn a lot from this to make my spaces feel a little bit more lived in. I tend to move on to the next project before I get the detailing to that level. All right, so here we have the cockpit. Again, this is that panel. I have it up on the right. Um, so I can kind of look at it here. Let's see. Um, so we have signal strength, PTT. Um, I don't think, you know, reading through there, I didn't uh, see any real startup procedure. I think it's, Benson tends to make them pretty approachable so you can get into them pretty quickly. So frequencies and signal strength, push to talk. Uh, this is all about, um, you know, we have, uh, turn that on, backup generators, turn that on, battery, fuel, exhaust, torques, radiator, radiator, radiator. What's this over here? Door will close. Oh, that's cool. There's a door in the front as well. Okay, it will close after five seconds, so an auto-closing door. Pass seat. Let's go ahead and sit in here. What's this? Transponder located distress signal. Door closed itself. Good. Compass. Your starter. We have handbrakes. Let's go starter. Oh, that's cool. The radar there. It's a bit of a uh, bit of detailing. Release the handbrake. Uh, AD steering, WS throttle, up down is for the gears. So nice to see manual. I like manual marker and instruments. So you see we have marker lights all around. Very cool, very cool. Let's go. Um, headlights, spots, illuminate surroundings, cockpit lights, heater, rear camera, map, night vision, and ox monitors. All right, good. And so you see this is my rear camera. Um, here, so night vision's off. So very cool. Let's go ahead and start driving. Let's shift up a gear. Let's see. Okay, handbrake starts in the off position. So shifting gears here. So because this is an off-road vehicle, we'll find a little bit of. Um, Find a little bit of terrain here. There's a little bit up here, just to kind of. Okay, so it's the rear rail steering. That's what the hinges are doing. Okay, very cool. Very neat, spindly design. You can imagine that probably wasn't all that easy to accomplish, but very cool. It's um, very uh, you know, it's maneuverable and it's stable and it's um, you know, it's it's very interesting the way that the legs are working and. Yeah, I'm not going to try to take it off a huge jump as was in the GIF, but um, definitely very cool. You know, I love the design of it. The, the paint scheme is excellent, so. Very cool build from Benzin. And I like these, um, let's look at it at night. I like these builds that are uh, based off some, you know, novels and stories. A lot of really cool lighting and uh, paintable indicators back today but uh, you know wonderful build by Benzin as is um, as is his way you know very rarely do you get any that's not exquisite from Benzin so 
let's go ahead and we'll look at the next one. All right, the next one we're going to be looking at here is the medium Coast Guard boat, survival ready. So some one picture here. This is from Mr. Black Beaver. This is my medium-sized Coast Guard boat that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. Features goes a good speed of 45 knots when fully loaded with fuel. Has a fully functional dead man switch, possible to turn off uh, to use dinghy. Has a purpose-built My Friend dinghy, uh, specifically made for my ship link is here. Use a waypoint autopilot. Here's the link. And I'm still figuring out the radar system, but here's the link for it anyways. Still more to come. All right. Thank you, Mr. Black Beaver. All right, so here's the Coast Guard ship, so let's go ahead and jump on. So we have some railings, kind of a wavy design. I tend to like to have straighter lines, but that's all personal preference stuff. Good detail in here, some nice paint. Equipment on the sides here. We have, here's the, uh, I like these, uh, I like the dinghy. That's very cool that it goes in and out of the back there. So we have winch in out and release dinghy. So I'm not gonna go ahead and, and um, work, you know, work the dinghy, but we'll go ahead and we'll jump in and we'll look at it. So we have engine compartment that's very cool. This is a cool dinghy. Um, I like this design that you can just put it right in the back there. It makes it nice and functional. You can go do a rescue with the smaller vehicle. So we try to do this deck by deck. So we'll kind of walk up this side as well, and then we'll go on in. We'll kind of end up in the top so we can give it a run. All right, so what is this room? Do we have anything in here? Yep, yep, this is the main hallway, just a little dark. All right, some uh, seating and some meds. What is that, player sensor? Okay. We have a bedroom in there. That's just the back side of that door. has a hatch to go down. All right. Uh, so this looks like uh, sliding weight. Looks like we're, we're a little off kilter here. Um, we have our engines here. That's the dinghy. So this is the, bat this is the stern. So there's our dinghy slide there. So looks like we're a little off balanced here. And here's the bow. So just some dead spaces in here that are not finished. But uh, it did said it say it did say that it was a work in progress. So. If I can't get out of here properly, I will just, um, there we go. I will, no clip. Okay, I tried closing that and it's not closing, but uh, let's go ahead and let's go up to the bridge and we'll take it for a little run. So good speed as advertised 45, so we'll see if we get and get that. Don't know why we're listing so much, but we are listing, so. Let's go ahead, uh, systems, gauge lights, toggle button. I don't know what to toggle button. I'm not going to press it if it doesn't, it's not labeled. Nav lights, a APU. All right, so um, I'm going to turn on infinite fuel just because if this was made before the uh, Industrial Frontier update, that could have issues, and it could just be my workbench doesn't have fuel, enough fuel in it for the vehicle. So I don't want the um, person to get dinged because the... Um, you know, something that might just be because of the way that I'm testing it on the world I'm using. So we have rudder left, rudder right, zero rudder, uh, hold bearing, use keypad to set the bearing, port engine start, starboard engine start, idle engines, desync engines, starboard throttle up, desync to use. Okay, so we'll keep them synced. Um, trims, list. List is shown as zero. List angle. We are listing. Winch in and out. Put this the thrust fuel level. Foghorn. Uh, dinghy attached. Zero dock thrusters. Dock thrusters. So let's go dock thrusters to the right here. It's not showing on the gauge, so I don't know if that's working here. Uh, waypoint. We have bearing two panel. Bearing tens. So that's part of my private. Some of my bearing stuff there. Right, uh, moving map there. So let's go ahead and let's get moving here. So I need to find. Uh, let's go H menu. So no H menu because we're in a regular seat. Master power. I didn't turn on ox power. Okay. Uh, let's go thrust up. Okay. 
So it's nice and fast here. This looks like speed here. So there's 45 knots. So we're actually a little bit about or as fast as advertised. So good speed for rescue boat. I really like that dinghy in there. Um, because of the seat, I have to steer with these controls, which isn't which isn't bad. You know, it's just something to keep in mind that you have to do. Just kind of look at it outside. Steers well. It's nice and stable. Once it gets moving, it's just um, you know lists a little in the dock, and we can zero the rudder. So it's it's. Uh, you know, I tend to do sticky rudders in a lot of my larger ships. It'll take you longer to turn. So. It uh, moves really nice, you know. If, uh, just anything that I would recommend is try to get that list under control. Um, you know, that the list when it's um, at at dock. You know, it has a uh, has a list. But really great build, uh, work in progress, and you know, uh, look forward to seeing it some more when it is complete. All right, we're on to our next one here. So we have the container ship capacity for containers, 95% finished. So let's go through some pictures. All right, so very cool. So this is another one by Mr. Black Beaver. This is my second sea vessel, hence the 002 uh, being the nameplate. Features easy to use crane, multiple interior space, an active ship stabilizer, etc. Still a whip ship, but it's probably 90% finished. Just got a few more things I'd like to get done. Update, redone engine room. Now it isn't a spaghetti mess in there. All right, so no spaghetti mess. Let's go ahead and spawn it. All right. So we'll go ahead and jump on here, try to break my ankles. All right, so we have a hold there. Um, says I can hold four containers, so this would be two in the front here, in the bow. I'm um, not ready to go down yet. Let's let's look at this first deck. So what do we have here? Uh, looks like crane, mag, mag, ropes up and down, left, right, boom. So there's all of our boom controls there. So still a work in progress. It shows. Go ahead, we'll finish this first deck and then we'll start to go around. There's four more in the rear. So, self loading with a crane is always a nice feature. Alright, so let's go ahead and we will start to go in. I would recommend some lighting in here. Um, maybe auto lighting, but. Yep, there we go. Selectable lighting is good as well. So, let's see, spear gun there, another one there. We'll go down first and then up. So there's some seating in here. Same door, bedroom in there. All right, so let's try to, we'll go down then up. So let's find our way here. That's just the other way into the seating. So let's go up, I guess. So back deck here, we can control the crane from here. Some seating in here, ample seating. All right, a little bit of clippage there. All right, um, here's the bridge. So we'll come back up the bridge. I just want to go down to the lowest levels before we go and operate it. So it looks like that is accessible via here. Ooh. All right, so here's the lowest level. Uh, looks like a dead space with some fuel in there. Another one, dead space here, some fuel. Um, I don't know what how to op, what this door is all about. Let me just see if I can no clip in there and see what's up with it. All right, hinge stock door. So here's our stability system. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm just gonna go into the bridge here. Yeah, we'll go all the way up to the bridge. All right, so no special uh, operation instructions here. Watertight doors. Okay, so these control those doors down there, so we can close them. A little bit of viewing area there. Uh, gauge lights, snav lights, bridge lights, deck lights, bilge pumps, foghorn, nothing yet. Limit RPS for fuel efficiency, interior lights, reverse, hold bearing, dock thrust to left and right. Generator, clutch, prop clutch, engine throttle, starter. 
so probably need some throttle. Yeah, so if you put your throttles to a minimum setting of when the engines will run, see, like, I don't, that's something that um, I recommend is don't have your engine throttle so that when you bring the throttle all the way back, it kills the engine. So all you have to do is tap it a little bit. See where it runs. So usually I think it's like 0.05. So if it's like 0.05, so I'd set the minimum on that throttle to 0.05. Start to bring the clutch in. Alright, so we're up and running here. And then we can do a generator clutch as well. Alright, so we'll look from the exterior view. The nice design uh, looks really looks really good. Nice and uh, simple and clean. You know, a little bit of a list here, but um, or a little bit of a pitch. So a little bit of a stability system. Let's see how we drive in this here. So no H menu. I recommend filling out the H menu. Um, am I able to steer? I am steering. Okay, just um, you know, it's a big ship. It kind of feels has that big ship feel that it's um, a little bit slow to steer. But uh, very cool build. Nice detailing. Uh, nice to see some cranes on there and uh, be a good cargo ship. So uh, thanks for posting, and we'll get ready to look at the next one. All right, the next build is going to be the Ignis 10x10 off-road tanker. So let's go ahead and look through some pictures. So a large firefighting truck. Very cool. So this is for, by Ali and Jan. Nice, discre nice uh, workshop page as usual. Ignis 10x10 Scarborough Rescue Service. Vehicle collection description, the Blackbird slash Skytech Ignis 10x10 is a heavy-duty off-road all-round fire tanker designed to primarily act as a passive tanker, but can assist with direct firefighting. With its massive water capacity of over 20,000 liters, you can be sure that even in remote areas without a water source, you'll still have enough fire retardant for the entire duration of the mission. Despite its length of 12 meters, it is as nimble as you will, th it is as nimble as you will need <laughs> That's probably more my reading than the sentence. Uh, it it's as nimble as you will need, comma. Thanks for it, thanks to eight wheel steering. Like its six by six brother, it features a modern three crew cabin and a remotely operated monitor that allows you to fight the fire from the comfort of the cabin manual. Startup ignition on, headlights on, parking brake off, monitor, water can, enable monitor, enable monitor pump, use up down left right access to aim, axes to aim. Fluid anchors, color codes, dark blue, low pressure line for total, light blue, high pressure line, white free line can be used as both output and intake. Red, pump intake, winch, pump intake one, tech data. Um, crew three, 12 meters long, 3.25 wide, four meters high, max speed 105 kilometers an hour, uh, 4.5 uh, hour uh, max duration. Engine unit one, Times BB twenty LT, uh, eight hundred and fifty horsepower, six hundred thirty four kilowatts, dry mass forty four fifty four kilograms, fuel capacity fifteen thousand and one liters. Really cool um, schematics. Uh, they've been making some really great um, schematics. Ali and Yan. Credits, uh, Serpentine SRS logo. Thanks to SRS team for testing and help. Uh, here's the SRS uh, Discord link. Okay, so here's the Ignis. Let's go ahead and do a walk around. So again, great paint job. I um, I reviewed. I think it was last last video, the video before the six x six version. So it's a larger one. Again, passive tanker, but can fight fires as well. SRS, uh, really great uh, detailing on the side here. Have our equipment. Very reminiscent of the six x six. All of our pumping in there. Very cool detailing and functionality as usual. Very cool, all of our uh, firefighting equipment in there. Nice big beast. That's, uh, I'm just looking for a door handle here. I think we operate from the left seat. We have winch controls there. Nice bit of XML editing and um, use of t the tilt. So I think we generally jump in these windows on these and then we can uh, go out with the door handle there. So a nice use of space for that, especially with XML windows. With, when you XML window like this, you lose the collision, or the collision is it might be one small block here, so you uh, end up you can't seal the volume, so it allows you to jump through the window, which is um, nice use of that. Hazards, floods. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll do the key first. 
So hazard lights, flood lights, SRS startup here. Um, same dash of the 6x6. We have our uh, radios there. Let's go through here. Uh, hazards, flood, spots, headlights, cabin lights, emergency lights, and siren. So good uh, use of the, of, the, um, of the sound blocks there. Uh, great lighting as usual. Very cool. Let's go ahead and we'll just shut the siren off. Uh, manual parking brake is off. Uh, simulated shifter there. We have ground sprinklers. So that's if the fire is near you that it um, you know, kind of puts it out as you go and it doesn't burn up your tires. Deploy monitor. So there's the monitor for our um, firefighting nozzle. Stable monitor pump. And then up, down, left, right, I believe. Yep, up, down, left, right from the seat. I like that... Um, this was on the 6x6. You see we get that yellow line showing where we're uh, indicating it to go. So that's nice. You see we get multiples if we do that. So so nice that we can also fight the fire with this. Yeah, we'll retract the monitor. Change uh, target cabin temp. So we have an auto heater in there. Cabin heat there. Some supplies. So we'll take it for a quick spin here. So let's look. AD steering. WS throttle. Left, right is the... Um, and up, down is for the firefighting hose. Horn, space. One is push to talk, three is blinker left. So as you can see, we get, um, we, I have my hazards on, so it probably won't show right. Four is blinker right, and then uh, change steering mode is six. So let's look at the wheels here. So we have um, kind of Ackerman steering there if we go six. Um, I can't tell the difference, but there might be a difference in steering mode there. So it looks like we are in, uh, let's switch to... Oops, so there's a, we have a throttle there. Let me just try to... Okay, so brake was on. All right, so I'm gonna go back to, to automatic. And so I just had the brake on. All right, so just drive around a little bit. So definitely a big, heavy vehicle. So it drives uh, nicely like a big, heavy vehicle, but it's still very stable. Um, you know, has good off-road capabilities. Just gonna kill some of these lights. But uh, as you can see, it's very stable, really cool vehicle. Um, SRS makes some great stuff. Nice detailing on the roof here, you know, with the uh, unit number. I think I'll go up top and check out that uh, hatch before we leave. But uh, very cool. I like the fire cannon there. Uh, looks nice and tidy. Sometimes that's a little bit, can be a little bit challenging getting those to look really good. But I like its 10 by 10 design. It's um, nice and big and it. Um, Add some great variety with the uh, other SRS products. So very cool uh, design. Let's just look at the mirrors. I didn't really look at mirrors. Nice uh, camera mirrors. Uh, nice use of XML in there to, to integrate them uh, nicely. But uh, very cool design. Like this one a lot. All right. So workshop page for our next vehicle is it's the KJ-74 Kishi. So this is from uh, Carnival. So good, nice looking jet here, kind of uh, reminiscent of the, I don't know, a little like an F-14, but it's, um, it has more of like an F-15 wing and F-14's cockpit kind of look. Carnival always makes some great aircraft. Like, I forget what this, I think this is modeled after a Russian missile. These are really cool. All right, some cool pictures there, again by Carnival. So uh, go check out Carnival's uh, jets often makes a lot of... Uh, Military jets. Introducing the KJ-74 Kishi. Not as fast as some of my other jets. The focus on this is handling armed with wide range of weapons for any situation. Uh, pilot manual startup. One. Takeoff. Avionics. Engine one, two. Fuel valve. Engine one, two. On. Parking brake. Off. Increase throttle until you start moving and taxi to the runway. 60% 60 60 throttle for a nice gentle takeoff. Again, um, you know, as a real pilot, you know, in small aircraft, you go full throttle. In larger aircraft with um, better thrust-to-weight ratios, you do not go full throttle. You don't need to. Um, and so I think a lot of people will just jam in the throttle on some of these aircraft, and you don't need to. Um, landing. Begin approach. Set flaps to 2 for landing. Decrease throttle until speed is around 140 knots. Uh, so 140 knot approach speed. I might drop it a hair lower. We'll see how it performs. Tap S to keep the nose up or hold. Okay, I'll just... Fly myself. I think we're good there. 
Uh, weapons. There are two safety switches below the weapons monitor. Missiles. Select the missile using the arrow buttons on the weapon monitor. Select it missiles will display in the screen with ammo count. Press 1 to fire. Cannon. Space bar to fire. 500 rounds of ammunition. Countermeasure 6 to fire chaff. There is an auto uh, chaff toggle on the left side. Mass. Uh, 10, 475, length 7.5 meters, width 10.75 meters, height 5 meters, fuel 8,165 uh, 8, liters, uh, two drop tanks, 445 liters each, speed at max throttle, 580 knots, best enjoyed at 60 to 80. Um, dropping pylons. The uh, two AGM pods and drop tanks can be dropped. Select which pylon you want to drop and press the drop button at your feet. Selection is uh, left, right, one to four. Credits. Phantom, Rapin, Phantom Raptor AM9G and R27TE, uh, Urine Wind ZE Flight Controller, Fuel Calculator ZE Bra, Clara's The Renders, Clara's The HUD, uh, LC Dynamic Braking, uh, there's the link, updates, none yet, uh, do not upload this with creation without my permission. So we'll go ahead and I'll just leave this up here, and we will go ahead and we will take off, so... Let's go ahead and take a look at the exterior here. So we have Kishi there, 74. Very cool. We have one of our cannons here. Kind of a much, kind of like an F-15's uh, intakes there as well. Nice bit of uh, weaponry on this. Curious to see how the gear articulate. Nice bit of XML as well. Definitely kind of has an F-14 look in the back here, an F-15's wing. You know, again, it's his own design, but, you know, we're all inspired by things, and they also, uh, you know, things start to look like other things, because, you know, for as far as aviation is concerned, they have to be a certain way to operate, probably, so. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and go through here. So let's start with, um, that's Master Arms, go Canopy. We'll do auto chaff on, even though we're probably not gonna. Nobody's gonna fire missiles at us. Uh, I don't know what that is up down there. Gear. Gears there. Release up. Avionics on. Engine uh, one and two fuel valves are on. So let's take a look at the uh, avionics. So we have RPSs, Gen fuel. Uh, can't really see what that is. FD is that for flight director? Not sure. Here's the weapons. Um, liters per second, uh, liters per kilometer, I would assume. Nice compact radar here. Looks like multi these are all multi-pages. Yep. So these are uh, reversionary panels, which means you can put them on different screens. So that's cool. So I assume they, they duplicate all through. So here's our map. So nice detailing on this map being nice and small. And this can go through. So they have some of their own separate little um, panels as well. So these these two at the bottom look reversionary. So very nice. So this is cool. Got to put it back to the way it was. There's our throttle there. What's that say? Um, just a design element. All right, uh, nav lights. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll start engines one and two. So let me see if we can find those here. All right, where are we at here? Engine one and two. All right, they're kicking on. Generally, IRL, of course, you know, you might start um, one engine first, then the next. So I think we're up and running. Uh, let's check our RPS. There we go. We're fl just wait for it to fire up. So fired up now. All right, so I'm gonna go through the list again. So four parking brake is off. So let's find that. So, especially these, it takes me a couple seconds to find things. I want to do it right the first time, so. I'll check the H menu as well. So, up, down is throttle. One is launch missile. Two is push attack. Three is cut thrust. Four is brakes. Mouse steer is five, and chaff is six. Let's find brakes. There we go. All right, so I'm going to start taxiing out. And so this is realistic how... Um, you know, they call it breakaway thrust. You need a bunch of thrust to get moving. Again, an object at rest tends to stay at rest. Object motion tends to stay in motion. So, 
Um, it takes a little bit of thrust, then you actually back it down. Like we would actually go up to almost like, you know, I don't know, 60% thrust to get moving. Um, you know, and then uh, as soon as you get moving, you can bring it all the way to idle and it will keep you moving. Because, you know, the object of motion wants to stay in motion. I'm going to go ahead and do a first person here. We're taxiing out. We shouldn't need the whole runway. Um, I didn't see anything um, for flaps on takeoff, so a flap zero takeoff, that's pretty typical. Oh, so it sees something out there. So it has Clara's um, HUD on there, which um, auto detects targets. I have yet to uh, really play with it much myself. So I don't know what percentage my thrust is at here, but I have 75 knots, so. Uh, maybe that's, I don't know what that 75 is, but we're up. Okay, um, I'm trying to find my gear here in a quick fashion. I want to look at them. So very cool articulation of the gear. As you can see, it's massively complex. <laughs> I bet that gave Carnival some headache. Um, gear can be challenging to get the right, um, especially the way the game functions. So I'm just going to kind of crank it, bank it here, and um, go and we'll... Uh, We'll go to a flyby of the other of the other vehicles here. Yeah, I know. There's a performance issue. We're coming up close to some other builds. So very cool. Flying over some of the other creations there. Do a little loop here. And I'll turn it into a split S. So that's what that's a maneuver. So nice. Um you know, fully moving tail planes on the horizontal stabilizer. So a lot of that looks XML and faked, which uh, gives it, you know, a nice realistic aesthetic, but still has a functional. It's kind of a Stormworks thing, being able to kind of maneuver as, as quickly as you can in this, um, you know, but it's not overly jittery and overly turny. I tend to try to like dead mine out a little bit, but this performs well and feels pretty realistic. Yeah, we'll do another split S. Very nice. All right, so let's see if I can't uh, knock off a missile. So let me go ahead and get through there on the missiles. So weapons, two safety switches below the weapons monitor. Okay, master arm, master arm cannon. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is select a missile using the arrow buttons. So there's one of our um, missiles. Don't know if this is air to ground or not, but I put a little vehicle. I'm just going to bring my thrust back here slow down just a hair here okay so this is compass at the bottom that's what we're reading there so knots is on the left there see I'm way slow you know I tend to prefer a little bit um, less sensitive throttle but um, you know that's just me being an aviation nerd and want things to be kind of realistic to my own um, to my own experience so a lot of targets out there I'm trying to find the right target I don't want to blow up something I Tend to. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll press one to fire. And there should be an electric cart out there. There it goes. It's following it, following it, following it. Boom, that looks like a hit. Uh, that's Phantom Raptors missiles. Yep, and I hit my electric cart and sent it uh, careening off to hell. So good, let's go ahead. We're gonna come around. So I'm gonna do a little bit of maneuvering in this. I tend to take a little extra time in the aircraft because you know that's what I have the you know that and driving is what I have the most experience with so I tend to um, you know try to focus in on the play characters uh, space bar should be fire uh, cannon all right and so we're gonna do a quick split s we're gonna come back we'll attack this um, electric cart it's orange so hopefully I can find it I'm gonna cut the speed down again you know, doing a strafing run, you want to slow your speed down. It gives you more time on target. So we don't want to go much slower than about 140 knots. So I think I, I kicked, the missile kicked it all the way out over there, I think. Yep, there it is right there. So nice, really good and controllable. Like, I was able to stay on it. We're up to 580 knots. Um... No real criticism on this, you know, it's all personal preference. The only thing I would really kind of do is like, it's a little bit sensitive for me, like see how quickly I can pitch. Um, that would be instant death in real life. But again, this is all personal preference stuff. Um, you know, it's it's fun and, you know, it's a game. So 
you know, but personally for me, I like a little bit more realistic, like that would, you'd be dead if you're doing that at 570 knots. But really, uh, you know, great top speed, really maneuverable, as you can see, you'd be dead right here, that's probably about 25 Gs. Um, but that's just, again, just personal preference stuff. I would, you know, I tend to like a little bit slower thrust or throttle on mine, just because it um, makes it so you can have a little bit more granular control. You know, in order to get the speeds um, in Stormworks, you need to be using things like duct fans, and so uh, it depends on where you're cutting it out. But again, another great vehicle by Carnival. Let's go ahead and do a landing here. I'm going to try to, again, we're going 480 knot, uh, 580 knots, so I need to set a marker so I know where the hell I am to get back. Uh, what's that lock? Oh, so the missile's locking on something. Okay, so there's something out there missile wants to lock on. So that's cool. It has a lock feature. All right, so I'm going to uh, get ready for landing here. So we'll follow the landing checklist here. Um, so pretty much just begin approach, flap set to two for landing. So let me find my flaps. Let's throttle. So you see we're going at a good speed. We're at 50%. Where's flaps, 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 flaps. This is probably flaps right here. Yeah, I bet that's flaps right there. So it says 140 for landing. I'm going to do 140 for landing just because... It's, Again, I don't have um, very good granular control. It's a little bit touchy on the thrust, so I'd have to kind of do that. Let's go ahead and let's go gear down, flaps to two. Oh, flaps to two, I don't know where the flaps are here. I'm trying to find the flaps. Pylons. Okay, so that's flap, oh, oh, don't crash, ding dong. Don't crash, ding dong, okay. All right, so it just unsettled me a little when I was putting the flaps in. I was kind of busy trying to find it. I'm trying to slow down here, so it's a little bit, like I said, touchy for my taste, but again, that's personal preference. Like, let's put it this way. This is, you know, it's it's more twitchy than anything I've flown IRL. I'm going to trim some here. So we're, you know, like, it's hard for me to get exactly the speed. Like, I literally tapped a key once, and it goes from 170 to 140. So, again, just, to, there we go. We're not bad right now. But you see, I'm, like, really wobbly. So that's, um, you know, it's good to have some instability for a fighter just because you can get on target, but it's a little bit tough for me to actually kind of get down and land. Um, doing all right now. It's just um, a little bit touchy. But uh, aiming bars coming in. And it'll settle in. So a little bit of a balloon there, just because I don't want to crunch it. But a little bit of a flat. Uh, no, it wasn't really flat. It was just a little bit of a plop of a landing. But part of that's just um, you know me learning the flight characteristics. You know, probably a couple, a couple more tries. You know, so the only real um, suggestion I would put is. Uh, maybe a little bit less sensitivity on the thrust, but of course, you know, people can change that themselves to suit their own needs. Um, I tend to like a little less sensitivity. You know, uh, when I was flying in real life, you know, we could control our speed within one knot. I think for, I think for regs, like if you're on a check ride or something, you, you could need plus or minus 10 knots. And if you were outside of that, it was a fail. You know, again, the game. You know, it's a great vehicle as it is. I that would just be my suggestion. Maybe a little bit less sensitivity on the thrust control. Let me control my thrust a little bit more, um, you know, precisely. Especially for landing, that makes it easier if I can control my thrust uh, a little bit more granularly. So, uh, excellent vehicle by Carnival. Um, you know, everything I've ever uh, flown from Carnival has been great. Um, great missiles from Phantom Raptor. We've had some Phantom Raptor stuff on here. Uh, excellent HUD by Clara. So, um, you know, great, great vehicle. Uh, really enjoyed this one. And thank you to Benzin, Mr. Black Beaver, Jan, and Carnival for submitting your builds this week. I really uh, enjoyed testing them. And if uh, you'd like your build review, just go ahead and put it in the Discord link located in the description, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.